there was a conference of birds of different types of birds of like the peacock of like the flamingo of the nightingale of the hoopoe like they all gathered together and because they did not have a, uh, a like a sovereign the hoopoe suggested let's go find our king let's go find our like leader so that they can we can be governed essentially and so the hoopoe suggested that they're in nearby like i've heard of this seymour seymour in farsi means the phoenix mm -hmm. and a phoenix you know as we know it's like a mythical creature right and so the hoopoe is like let's go and find the seymour because only the seymour could be worthy enough to like rule over all, all of us and so and the hoopoe has been on this journey before to go find the seymour and he was describing the journey to all of the birds and said that we all need to go and find him. But on this journey, we're going to go through seven valleys or seven cities. There's different variations of this story of what it is. And I, I wanted to ask Jess if you could actually read us what these seven valleys are. Yes. One is Valley of the Quest where the wayfarer begins by casting aside all dogma, belief, and unbelief. Should I proceed? Please. Two. The second one is the valley of love, where reason is abandoned for the sake of love. The third is the valley of knowledge, where worldly knowledge becomes utterly useless. The fourth is the valley of detachment where all desires and attachment to the world are given up. Here, what is assumed to be reality vanishes. The fifth, the Valley of Unity, where the wayfarer realizes that everything is connected and that the beloved is beyond everything, including harmony, multiplicity, and eternity. The sixth is the Valley of Wonderment, where entranced by the beauty of the beloved, the wayfarer becomes perplexed and steeped in awe, finds that he or she has never known or understood anything. And the seventh is the valley of poverty and annihilation, where the self disappears into the universe and the wayfarer becomes timeless, existing in both the past and the future. Ooh. So the hoopoo goes and he tells everyone, I don't know, do you have just do you have a picture of the hoopoe by any chance if you can put it up as i'm like up. continuing this how do you the hoopoe bird is just so beautiful oh, h-o-o-p-o-e yeah no, and so the no. hoopoe bird is like telling this story and he's telling everyone like the different valleys that that they need to go to and by the sheer mention of this, some of the birds like drop dead <laughs> and they're like, they faint and they're like, oh my God, this journey is too intense. And then others start asking questions and having objections, but like, I don't want to go or like, why do we have to go? Or like, why, how are you sure that they're there or whatever? All their myriad of um, excuses <coughs> that they could think of. And but in the end, about a thousand birds travel along with the hoopoe to go. So this is the hoopoe bird. Look how beautiful it is. Like, look at the crown that it has on its, he on its head. And there's so many. I really encourage you guys to go look, at, look up some of the illustrations of the Conference of Birds. Because um, uh, really, it's really gorgeous. But essentially, like the wings are black and white, and it has this like crown and a beautiful long beak. So the hoopoe bird is wonderful in that it it finds a house in the tree. It doesn't build a nest. It it also forages on the ground. So it's a bird that you'll find on the ground, pecking on the ground, um, finding worms and like different things. Uh, and this is like a quality of the bird that it of the hoopoe is that it can be both earthly and heavenly at the same time. It transgresses through this like seamlessly. That's so cool. So, so when all the in every single valley that Jess mentioned, at some point, some of the birds get stuck in those valleys. 
some of them, they go to the Valley of Quest or the Valley of Search, and then they don't go any further along with the hoopoo. And then some of them, out of illness, out of thirst, out of dehydration, or out of um, different reasons, various reasons, they all drop out in the different valleys. And when they get to the seventh valley, at the last the valley of, what was it, Jess? The seventh is the valley of poverty and annihilation. Annihilation. In the seven valleys, it's called the, uh, the valley of absolute nothingness Ooh. and poverty. And when they get to the seventh valley, they go through this like tumultuous journey. And only 30 birds make it to the last city, the last valley. And when they get to the last valley, all they see is one thing. And it is a mirror. And they look around and they see that there's actually no Seymour. And Seymour is a play on words in Farsi. C means 30. Mor means bird. So Seymour means 30 birds. So at the end of the seventh valley, you have the mirror with the reflection of the 30 birds. So really what they were looking for was themselves the entire time. Mm. So this, this sort of story is kind of like a similitude to how we live life is that you can be living life and you can learn about the chakras and all the various different things about the family, about blood, about love, about other and learning how to express yourself and things like that. But the ultimate journey of this life is really to see, to see the end in the beginning is to, is to basically see that the end goal is always for us to learn about ourselves.